The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers Podcast. I am your co-host, Hayden, and with me is my gorgeous partner, Solen. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't expecting singing. Slam. All right. Okay, I'm expecting the new EP sometime in the next week. Yeah, yeah especially next week. Yeah. Before we dive into today's episode, uh, we always do a, a nice little... Um, are we doing the cheeky question first? Of course. We're doing the cheeky question first. Yes. Right. I'm curious. All right. Tell me so, more. If there was one thing you could change about yourself immediately, oh. what would it be? Oh, it's such a bad question for self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I would do. The best answer would be, well, there's nothing to change. Oh, really? But, but I mean, yeah. reali realistically, I don't know. I think I'll change maybe the the dark circle around my eyes. Okay. Why? I know it's a family thing, but still, like, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me look, like, way older, I believe. Oh, okay. Like, that's one of my big complex, I think. My just my dark circle around my eyes. Fair enough. To be fair, though, I'm not drinking enough water at all. So I don't know if I drink more water. Yeah, there's a, there's a glass right here. <laughs> I don't know if I drink more water, it's going to be better. Maybe yes, maybe not. But it runs in the family, so. Well, fair enough. Yeah. What about you? For me, I think um, it would be lessening my procrastination abilities so so being able to actually focus on a task mm -hmm. and work with that task like i don't mind doing single-minded things yeah as long as like when i'm doing the thing i'm not like oh notification I've, i remember doing needing to do this if yeah. i need to do something else i'll write a note yeah so i that that's one of the things yeah. that i have trouble with it's crazy because you asked me that question and automatically i thought you meant physically no. I went I, I went with physically. And now, now I feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I don't feel dumb, but it's just crazy how like that question triggers mm. in a sense. Yeah, that, that's why I was sort of like tossing out whether or not I would ask that one or something. But it's good. It's actually making me realize that like it's not just physique. I could have said something else about like how I do things, how I cope with stuff. Wait. Oh well. well we I'll change my answer now. <laughs> it's been it's being recorded by by every day. Exactly. And I can't bother editing it. No, so neither can I. Jeez. Oh man, so like yeah, if you've uh if you've watched, listened last episode, we finished with the spicy question with bad English, uh, Hayden told me. But anyway. <laughs> it's okay. Can traveling as a couple break your relationship? Yeah, and I think that was quite an interesting one because yeah. for us... Let's it, think about us later. Let's yeah, answer the question. Oh, uh, okay. Do you think it can break your relationship to travel with your partner? 100%. Yeah. 100% it can break your relationship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's because you you find out things you about each other and yourselves that you wouldn't find in the comforts or the, the normal surroundings. The second you put under stress in a different situation, mm. a different place, a different language, yeah. all of a sudden you... Like you panic yeah. and those, maybe not exclusively that, but those sort of interactions with your partner, they'll go, yeah. oh, this guy crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, he's not that relaxed as I thought. Yeah, he's really uptight. Every time we catch a bus, it's like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, true. No, I, I agree. But I do think that if traveling is super, super important for you and you realize that it doesn't work traveling with your partner. I mean, the, the decision of not traveling with your partner anymore is really hard. Mm, it's Some people hard. can easily do it because they're like, well, I can travel alone. I can travel with friends. I can travel with families. Um, 
but it's nice to travel and discover the world with one of the person you like the most on this planet. Yes, I yeah. agree. So it's so hard. I remember my first boyfriend ever. I was, uh, we were, I was 18, I think he was a bit older. And we went to France to see my family. So we stayed in France for three weeks. Yeah, around around three weeks. And he has never traveled before, like outside of the province even, I think. And he found it so hard and it was so... Um, it was such an anxious moment for him yeah. to travel. And even if we were like in a safe space with my family, we were not spending a lot of money. After like one week, one week and a half, he was like, nope, can't do it anymore. Like, I'm so tired of this. Like, I'm really looking forward to go back home. Dang. And I was like, oh. it was a, a big milestone for me. Can I say that? No, it was a big, big realization for me. Okay, was I was good. like, oh, damn, what do I do now? Yeah, because I, 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 mean, I imagine that even at the time, like you were like traveling was such a, an integral part of who you are mm. and sort of realizing that the person that you're with is like, eh, not for me. And you're like, oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like you were saying before, it is those those things where you're sharing those emotions, you're sharing those experiences mm. and and things. Obviously, like did he yeah, I'm assuming he spoke French. Yep. Oh, so what was his problem? He was Quebecan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry for all the Quebecan who's listening, but yeah, yeah. his problem was he was Quebecan. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm. I was the problem. No, we wait, were wait, both wait, the problem. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, really hard. And then with my second boyfriend, we've never traveled together actually. Never, because I, I, I wasn't, that's how I felt, but I wasn't a huge priority for him. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't really sort of know too much about your boyfriends, if I your ex-boyfriends. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. What about you? Have you had like bad or good experiences outside of myself, like traveling with um, a partner or someone you were seeing? Uh, yeah. Um. So, but we need to be careful what we're saying. Yeah, because we do. we don't want to rerun. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Insider knowledge, that little joke. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically, uh, one of one of my exes uh, was American, mm -hmm. and traveling. Um, we did when we were in at university. We traveled with a couple of friends, mm -hmm. and I found it really. Mm. weird because yeah. I want to travel with her but I didn't want to sort of take away from friends yeah. and she wants to explore yeah. the country and that was I've she obviously liked traveling because she came all the way over to Australia but I I found myself not I don't know if it was like get jealous but like but like I Wait, wanted jealous I know oh my god it's a part of you I don't know <laughs> that's because I've come to terms with it now okay. like, it's a lot easier <laughs> Good self-esteem now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I back myself up. It's yeah. fine. Um, and also I trust you, so mm -hmm. it's easy. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so I guess with that, it was trying to... I mean, I was trying to figure out a lot of things back yeah. then. I, I didn't... Before I even went to uni, like the year before I even met her, I didn't even... like I didn't even know a girl my own age. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, the perks of going to an all-boys school. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of other things that were sort of going on, but I... I learned that when I traveled uh, to see her in America uh, with a friend of mine, um, I realized that I loved traveling and she also loved traveling. So I thought it was something that I really liked, but I don't have any money. That was my you, problem. You didn't have any money. Yeah. yeah. Like a, being a uni student straight, like just finished. Yeah. I... But it was a fit when you traveled together or discuss, yeah. like were out of your comfort zone together. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and it's it's nice that it was a good first experience as well. For sure. And the cool thing is because we didn't really leave it on bad terms. It was more like an acceptance of like, I don't think this is gonna work. Mm -hmm. We actually ended up meeting up again when I went back to the UK. Like, oh, wow. okay, yeah. Like ages yeah. later, you thought that something sort of happened, but at the end of the day, it, I don't even remember. Like, like I met up with her in um, in Scotland. And it was the first time I went to Edinburgh, yeah. and like we just that was the part you've never told me. I think I did, maybe under the influence of one or two beers, but I think I did tell you. 
for it. But at the end of the day, like it was kind of cool because we we still hung out. We still you know caught up on things. She caught up with other friends of well other uni mates that I went yeah. to uni with That's over cool. in the UK. Yeah, and. Yeah, there's not like the cool thing is there was never any like bad blood or anything like that. It was really nice to just sort of be able to hang out. Mm -hmm. So I think it was cool to sort of find that even after all those years, yeah. we were still cool and we could sort of travel yeah. and see stuff. So yeah, but I mean, I I find that um, traveling with you is like one of the most exceptional things because at the time of this recording, we are traveling in like 24 hours to go to Montreal, yeah. and then a few days later, we are going to. Mexico! Yes. So excited to go back to Mexico, one of my favorite country. Oh I my think. gosh. Yeah. But anyway. We won't dive into that. We'll, we'll talk about it later. later. But we, I mean, we actually met each other while traveling, which, um, if you didn't know, you can listen to episode two. No, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, which episode one? <laughs> you can listen to episode one about everything, but. And, the yeah we got to know each other while traveling when we were an official couple we traveled non-stop for two months together yes. we were 24 7 together for a whole two months yeah it was and it was yeah it was wonderful and all of our travel experiences up until the last two months we traveled together were absolutely amazing. But I think when we traveled to um, South Africa. South Africa? South Africa. Wow. Which continent did we go to? <laughs> I don't remember that. We didn't go. Oopsies. South America. Ah, oh, yeah. No, I do recall South America. I do yeah. recall South America. You know, like Chile, <laughs> Argentina. Uh, yeah. It wasn't easy for us. Yeah. There, I... was, there, there was a whole week or two, I think. In total, that we were like, fuck him, oh, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were just like stepping on each other's toes and yeah. getting mm. nitpicky, like petty nitpicky at each other. I know. But I, I, I think part of it was because we wanted to do so much in such a short period of time mm. and probably actually the food as well. Yeah, that's what I had in mind. We were eating so shit. It's so terribly. We were always tired. We were not really exist. I mean... We, we were exercising, but not on a day-to-day -day basis outside of uh, walking or hiking volcanoes, which is a pretty cool Pretty cool activity. experience, yeah. But yeah, it was really hard, and I was like... To be fair, it, it, not something broke inside of me, but I was like, shit, is it the beginning of the end? Like, we... Oh, damn. Like, it was like intrusive thought. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> That's kind of scary. That, oh, I'm happy I dodged that bullet. <laughs> it was an intrusive thought because I was like, all the experiences we had so far traveling together, it was so amazing. But what's not working now? You know? Mm. So part of me was like, oh, maybe we're not meant to be together anymore. It was all like a honeymoon. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but then everything got fine and we, we, we talked it through and it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. Okay, I didn't. I I, I didn't know it was that close to the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. No, I'm not <laughs> saying I was going to let you go, but I was like, oh, is it? Does it mean that the? Sorry, you just let you go. Like I'm just thinking, like in the middle of like a hike in the middle of nowhere. Bye, Hayden, and you just leave me there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I cannot desert you. Yeah, just oof, oof, scary times. Yeah, but anyway, and one fun thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So, we started our YouTube journey through a traveling couple that I called Karen Knight. Yes. Right? It's a bit because of them that we started and really wanted to travel and put those journeys on YouTube. Yeah. Right? We were like... Oh my god, it looks so fun. So I was thinking, I was thinking that we could actually, from what we know from them, we could actually analyze Karen and Nate relationships through okay. the years. Because if you don't know Karen and Nate, I think they've been traveling full time for the last seven years. I believe it's seven. Seven or eight years. And oh my god, I really admire them for that. Yes. I really admire them for that. And I wonder what is their winning formula? Uh, Relationship-wise? Yeah. Oh. 
for them to just keep going and keep getting stronger at least that's what i assume watching their videos mm. how they can get stronger while traveling full-time what are their tricks hmm. you know yeah, yeah so what's the first thing that comes to your mind what well, do you think about them well i i think that they just from like the little bits and pieces that we get like some of the behind the scenes whether it be through instagram or whatever mm. they do a fair bit of exercise True. and and I, and I think the thing is because they know they're like different kinds of exercise they allow each other to do that so they have their own time and they're getting a bit more exercise that's so good and i didn't think about that it's like, funny because you are like you studied exercise science yeah. and right now it shows i studied <laughs> sexology and my mind was going more like communicate communication skills and whatever so what what you're bringing to the table is actually interesting tell me more <laughs> <laughs> i love the, the quick five words yeah. there. that's good but i think because the way that um a lot of like when they were in australia for example mm -hmm. they were like they said like you know i think cara wanted to like meet up yeah. for like a coffee for example yeah. whereas nate was like hey i'm going for a run mm -hmm. i don't mind running by myself but it'd be really fun to run with other people yeah and so that idea that they're happy doing other they're happy doing other activities and being okay exploring slightly mm -hmm. different things mm -hmm. from time to time i think is really helpful yeah because then you're not over the top of each other all the time you're getting a bit of you know exercise doing something yeah. fun that you enjoy doing true and that's something we didn't do when not at we, all well when... i mean yeah there were a few i think restricting factors like exhaustion because i mean if you're absolutely absolutely wrecked the the days were so short yeah the days was well oh, i mean yeah. i mean it was the the winter solstice when yeah. we were at the, the southernmost point yeah great party uh, oh. terrible length of day so i think um we were not able to even consider that sort of element in our plan because we were so focused on what where we're going next what we're doing next mm -hmm. we don't have we haven't figured out the 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 literal luxury of being able to whether it be exercise yeah. or just have our own time and be cool with that yeah throughout whether it be each day or each week yeah whatever. because we were so rushed like you said earlier in everything we didn't have time to take that time because we wanted to enjoy the city we were in it we yes. were in at the time and we wanted to we, we would like we're a couple we're gonna do it together we're gonna have fun it's gonna be good and then you sort of walk and you're like i love this person but i hate this person i love this person but I hate <laughs> we force their happiness <laughs> at times i think yeah i i think it definitely felt like yeah it's a new place come on let's uh, like let's just go let's just get out like short like and usually most of the time we get back we're feeling pretty tired and we can cuddle up and it's fine but Boy, howdy, sometimes uh, like just getting out the door, it was a bit tricky. Yeah. Because the weather was usually pretty pretty off. Yeah. And it was pretty gloomy. Mm -hmm. And we weren't eating correctly. And aside from like the odd hike, like you said. Yeah, because like Kara and Nate, they have, <laughs> they have the luxury to buy what they want in a sense. And mm. healthy means, unfortunately, a bit more expensive mm. and again we're repeating it we're cheap as people so we go for the nastiest stuff half the time yeah it's on us yeah. it's on us but and especially those last couple of videos Karen Nate has been traveling a lot by van and they have a kitchen yeah in the van so they cook whatever they want yeah and it helps so much mm. it helps so much and that's what I learned through that holiday is that if you're traveling as a couple and you're eating shit and if you're not used to it, you're going to get super exhausted and you're going to be uh, on your nerves Yeah, all of the time. Yeah, I think I think both of us were very easily angered or upset. And we have good communication, we, usually. I like to think we do. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just thinking about the couples that they're, they're not used of like open and honest communication. Yeah. And I'm like, it's the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, maybe not but it's gonna be harder yeah but what like so i feel like the exercise take what was something that you were sort of analyzing about their relationship while traveling from a sexologist point of view um it was mostly the fact that when they are exhausted from their travels they're 
communicating well they look like they're communicating and they're like okay we're gonna stop now we're gonna rest on and also they're doing a um what do they how do they call it when it's like a work holiday uh workation workation yeah exactly I, I, I don't actually know if that's a thing i just try where it, it, it it's like way too much if they've, they've been traveling for way too long and they're like okay we're gonna book one week in a hotel room we're doing absolutely nothing no visiting no nothing we're just like on the computers taking coffee watching movies and that's it just yeah. you know and i think that is amazing when you can do it yeah of course but you could do it even one day to just relax and take yeah. the time for yourself and i think i think they realized that they needed that a couple of years ago and i find it so interesting that at some point they they would have been like hey i'm so tired what do we do should we stop everything or we find another option and yeah. what is this other option yeah i think just to add on to that mm -hmm. the thing that i found that i liked about their relationship was that they also weren't just looking after their own relationship but their relationship with home and so every time around Christmas, I think it was, mm -hmm. just after Christmas, they go back home for a month or two. Mm -hmm. Oh, a month. I think it's about a month. Yeah. And so that way they, they still are connected to the people back at home. And that is something that, like, again, that's a wonderful luxury to be able to just pop back home, yeah, be with family, and then pop back out. Exactly. But I, I love that they understand that balance mm. of not just relationship with themselves, but the relationship with other family as well and exactly. friends. Exactly. Exactly. I think that really would help their own relationship mm -hmm. because they're not necessarily as worried about things at home, but they're like, oh, it's all right. Yeah. I'll see you the next time. Yeah. What I don't know how they're dealing with, though, is the intimacy part. Meaning? Well, sexuality and all that stuff. Or just like, you know, just intimacy with each other. So, well, I mean, like, you'd probably be able to do a fair amount of intimacy in things like your Airbnbs and your... Um, <laughs> Like, yeah, like, but like, again, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get it. What you're, no, yeah. but it, again, it depends because if you are in, if you're just renting a room in an Airbnb, you can have intimacy, but you need to be careful not to be too loud, not to like break the bed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Never happened, mind you, but like, you know, you, it's hard and in a hostel, it's hard as well. It's really feasible, but like, yeah. You still have that at the back of your mind, unless it's, it's a kink. Like, unless oh, you, right. you know like, what I mean? Un yeah. Unless it's a kink for you to like, oh, I might get caught. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You yeah. know, but if it's not, and you don't, you don't always want to be on, on your toes. Yeah. Like on your guard, like trying to time it for when people are in and out. Exactly. Exactly. So when you start traveling and you're, you're on a budget, it's pretty hard to have yes. intimacy as a couple, especially for like, um, long-term travel yeah mm. yeah i think uh i think that was kind of hard for our two months i think that's why it was a bit tricky because we we're always staying in like hostels and yes, like yes 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 on top of the aforementioned things i think that was yeah we didn't sort of have much time for i know we were spending all the time together but we didn't have much time for us yeah <laughs> like we were more working on you know the exploring and seeing and the doing versus like being a couple and sort of hanging out together yeah yeah having that um that type of intimacy and by intimacy i don't even mean sex like i don't even mean uh, being genitals with one another you know yeah uh, yeah being genitaled <laughs> <laughs> playing with each other's genitals yeah no i've got i've got it i've got it i don't i just love the fact you've said it three times now anyway yes like I don't necessarily mean only that, but just cuddles or cu yeah, cuddling, kissing, caressing, you know. Well, I I, I got to say, like, I like the intimacy of like just watching something with you in bed, just you know, like hand hand just on your leg sort of thing. That's nice. I like yeah, that sort of thing. It is really nice. Up until when you fall asleep and you snore in my ear, it's beautiful. <laughs> Don't yeah, she's gone. Yeah, okay. yeah, but yeah. Anyway, when you're budget traveling, I think it's pretty hard to be intimate. Okay. Yeah. No, I pay that. Mm. I pay that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just. I guess I. I again. 
I've got more of the, the sportier side of things. You've got that, that element yeah. of the sexology stuff. So mm. that was honestly, that was the main points I wanted to bring. Okay. And so did you want to sort of try and compare that to our own relationship or do you feel like we've already, you know, mixed and matched that sort of thing quite nicely thus far? But I don't know, I guess what would be for like budget travelers, for budget travelers, couples mm -hmm. that wants to travel, what would be some tips to maintain the relationship? Um, I guess short travel, but long, long term travel as well. I guess try and have plans to be intimate throughout the time of your travel. Mm -hmm. Whether it be like, you know, if it's a short travel, like once or twice, like maybe a nice dinner, yeah. and like, like candlelit bed. I don't know. Like, or like <laughs> candle one. Candlelit bed. Maybe not the In bed. In Airbnb. Or... Well, you never know. <laughs> We're talking budget traveling, Hayden. Look, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You could be. You could be in the like Vietnam. You can get some really wonderful things for not very much. Yeah, fair enough. But um, or Thailand for that matter. But it's like, I think if you plan to have little moments where you can be together and you're not looking at doing other stuff, like you're looking at just yeah. being together, I think that would be, I guess, one thing that I'd like to implement in our travel. Okay. It's yeah. like like one or two times where it's like. It's just us. We don't. We don't have to go see stuff. We don't have to go do stuff. We don't have to be somewhere or hang out with other people. Yeah, and you know what? That's what we did when we were in Poland, our first travels together. Remember, we went to one city and we didn't discover that city at all. We stayed in bed all day long. Yeah, that was Raw Claw. Ro yeah. Ro I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> the W's are V's, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Ro Ro yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway. Raw Yes, we did that, and it felt so good. Yeah. It was really gold. Gold? It was really gold. It golden. Was re it was gold, man. It was absolutely golden. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're a little it was right? good, but and you know what? In that travel, we had a lot of this. We had a lot. Yeah, we had a lot of this and just... We, we found, without planning it, we actually found a lot of moments yeah, to do that sort of stuff. That's true. Maybe it's be, like, maybe in South America, because, is it because we're like, taking each other for granted a bit more than uh, four yes. years ago, four or five years ago? Possibly. Maybe. I also think that um, because of this, this, what we could afford bed-wise, uh, we were sleeping in separate beds a lot of the time. In? In South America. Yes. So we were sleeping That's in separate true. beds. Yeah. So I guess that also, you, like you lose that, like the, yeah. like I miss being the little spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Another tip I would have had, ha oh my god, my English, I have so much trouble. Here's some more water. Thank you. No, man, I'm having my tea anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> Another tip I would add if you're traveling as a couple would be to validate each other. To take, not validate, but yes, to validate. Let, let me do that again. Yeah, try again. That, I didn't yeah, mean that. Me yeah, we <laughs> ran. <We ride. laughs> We're so bad. Okay, another tip I would add if you're traveling as a couple would be to check in with each other and be honest when you are exactly. being checked in on. And just, it takes two, maybe maximum ten minutes. Like, hey, are we good? Is there some stuff that we want to talk about that I did that bothered you, and vice versa? Just mm. so that way there's no accumulation of frustrations. Yeah, that sort of bottleneck yeah. to one particular event and then exactly exactly i think that's really important i like that i like that a lot and i think you do a much f oh no i do ask you how you go on a fair bit but sometimes i think i ask you too often sometimes and, you, and that in itself no it's me. because you assume are you sure you're okay that, that's what you're going because well, i'm trying to get you to open up mate <laughs> <laughs> mate i'll open up when i want to open up exactly <laughs> i need you to open up when i ask you <laughs> That's how it's going to work. <laughs> See, that's an example of what you shouldn't do. <laughs> I think, all right, I'm just going to add on to this. Both of us are currently laughing right now. Yeah. And we're both, I, I think <laughs> another tip would be to be able to like, yeah, be okay with laughing and um, have fun still. Like not. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're still traveling. Everything is okay. You're probably safe anyway. Like it's going to be fine. Yeah. Just open communication, honest communication, and put your ego aside. 
Oh man, I'm so glad this is being recorded. I'm gonna play that on repeat every. I know that's my problem. I have a big ego, like I know, but <sighs> I've, you know, I've done some progress in the Wait. last five years. You have. Thank you very much. And by the way, you have a huge ego as well. Baby, of course. Baby. <laughs> takes one to know one, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's super important because when you're at home, it's easier to just leave and. Well, whatever well yeah you can it's easier to have that time to yourself yeah when you're traveling well not that you're stuck with each other but sometimes it's i want to say safer yeah to stay together depending on where you are if you're in like a hotel or a hostel i th fine yeah sorry i like before I forget, yeah because my my mind's pinging um i think sort of jumping back to what i was saying about mm -hmm. Car and Nate mm -hmm. doing quite well mm -hmm. is making sure that if, if for example, you're like the stars are not lining up and you guys are clashing, yeah. being okay to have that time apart yeah. and not stew next to each other. I uh, guess. It's like if some if someone prefers to read, they like mm. read. Yeah. If someone just wants to just you know brain what is it, what do they call it like when they're scrolling death scrolling death scrolling like like you know what I death mean scrolling. doom scrolling that's doom the word, <laughs> that's not what I'm looking for doom scrolling death scrolling I mean. <laughs> That's very intense. Doom scrolling. That's what I'm talking about. But I think if you're if you're okay with sort of having that time to yourself, yeah, and you know for an hour or whatever, like just to decompress, and then mm -hmm. you know reevaluate it after that. So if you both realize we're on very different pages of different books right now, you need you need a secret word. And don't let it always be pineapple. No. <laughs> Like code, code red, code red. We have a code red. <laughs> we have a code red. Let's go apart, move apart. Yeah, get your running shoes. Leave. I yeah. need to stay home. <laughs> yeah, that's something we should actually do for ourselves as well. When, uh... I think so. Actually, talking about it, I'm starting to like think. Okay, so in Mexico, I need to make sure that I do X, Y, Z. This is gonna be good practice for us. It is. It is. And what I'm thinking about right now is one thing that frustrates me so much about traveling with you. Oh, I like where this is going. Yeah. Oh yeah, we oh yeah, we could talk about what we hate the like, most about traveling pet, with the other one. Pet pet peeves. Pet, yeah, pet okay. peeves of your partner. But I'll start. Okay. <laughs> what I hate the most about traveling with you is how messy you are. Mm -hmm. And because so because you're messy, sometimes you're like you think you lost your stuff. Like passports I don't... or money or your freaking wallet and it's stressing me out so much <laughs> and I really need to detach myself from that if you lose your wallet not my problem well I mean it's, it's, a, it's a partial problem it's, but it's, it's not it's not your problem it's partially my problem because then I need to pay for everything but well, that's okay your turn you know where I live so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I'm just, uh, part of me wants, like, I can feel my ego go, defend yourself, defend yourself. <laughs> no, let's not defend each other. It, you let's mean, not defend ourselves. Uh, yeah, let's not defend ourselves. Let's just take it in and apply what we preach. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. What is my number one pet peeve of you? There's none, I know. <laughs> I. Oh, I mean, it used to be a bit of a pet peeve generally, but like, like when you when you get very short with me, and then you get yeah. mad, yeah, and then you don't realize you've raised your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're so weird. I'm like, I'm not raising my voice, and then I'm like, she's raised her voice. Do I raise my voice to match her voice? No, because then she's gonna yell at me saying that I raised my voice, and then I feel like I'm in the wrong again. <laughs> yes, that's my red flag. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to work on that. <laughs> but I like I'm not gonna lie, in the last what month are we in now? March. Yeah. Like in the last three months, we've actually been really good. Yeah, we haven't been traveling as well, so Mexico's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a good no. test. But I mean like like the end of last year was quite full on. There were a couple of times where we sort of like butted heads, particularly mm -hmm. with my apparent I don't know what you're talking about, uncleanliness. Uh <laughs> 100% I'm not the cleanest, okay? Yeah. Uh, this is okay. I'm okay. Because, I'm okay to own that. It's because at home, we're like, okay, you're going to have a messy corner. But while traveling, your messy corner 
is supposed to be your bag, your backpack. But your messy corner becomes the room we're living in. Not always. You know? And it's just because that messiness transposes in the electronic bag. And I freaking hated it when, like, all the electronics were not in the electronic bag that yep. I bought especially for the electronics. So I was like, hey, mm -hmm. where is that? Anyway, I'm uh, feeling myself. Uh, yeah, I can see it. You can uh, seek revenge if you want. No, I don't. It's, not, it's not that I want to seek revenge. I think it's more that I've, I've started to uh, recently have a bit of an insight into how my head works. Yeah. And I do get very distracted. Mm -hmm very easily yeah and i go down to rabbit holes and then i've totally forgotten where the hell i've mm -hmm. where i was before yeah and it's very frustrating for me have you been realizing that like sweet like short um bracket have you been realizing that since you tested concerta what test oh sorry concerta i was literally thinking um like a concert and it threw me right off no 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 <laughs> The pills. You, yes, yes. Yeah. I, my concentration levels are way better with yeah. that. But mind you, I think that I think it's a bit in, on the end. Wonderful to sort of go. Okay, like where did I put? I'm like, bing. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like I know where. I, like I know where it was. Yes. I, I actually remember because a lot of the time I'm like, okay, retrace your steps, and I'm like literally going. Like I walk backwards, and I'm like trying to. Like yeah. I'm trying. The, the thing is, I I do a lot of breathing to yeah. calm myself down because I get so frustrated. It's like, but your little Nigel in your head when you take concerta is like looking, like searching so quickly into the archives of your memory. No, he's just like, oh yeah, there you go. Try that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. He's not like you know flicking flicking exactly. that through a magazine yeah. and like you know yeah. drinking coffee or something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think um I think we I think we've covered just about everything, have we? Or did you have anything good. else you wanted to sort of throw at me before we? Yeah. Uh, Oh. Next time. Next time. Next time. No, I think, I mean, there's so much stuff we can talk about, but I guess the main tips were taking time for each other, mm -hmm. uh, checking in. Checking in. I mean, validating each other's emotions checking in and as well. Uh, having a secret code when things are not going well. <laughs> yeah. And what else? Uh, I mean, having, just... having time to yourself. I, like, yeah, I said to... No, no, it's... First point. What was, that? What was your film? The yeah. first point was uh, taking time for each other or something like that. Yeah, taking time for each other. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I know what Yeah, because, uh, yeah, together I'm like taking time Yeah, alone. apart, yeah, yeah, alone. Yeah, that's what I meant, but you're right. Oh, okay. Because... Okay. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> God, we're dorks. We right. are dorks. But, yeah. Hey, good luck with your travel with your partner. Or yeah. partners. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, true. Bye, you can. Bye, baby. Bye. 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 <laughs> Do you want me to ask the spicy question yeah, for the uh, next episode? Yes, please. Because something we haven't told you actually is that this is going to be like a three part series about relationship, we'll relationship and sexuality while traveling. So, yeah, this was first episode. Second episode. The spicy question is, when you're traveling and you're single, are you finding yourself to be more promiscuous? Promiscuous. 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 <laughs> That's such a good word. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? Promiscuous. Promiscuous. Am I pronouncing it wrong? Please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spicy question. So, um, hitting a lot of values here, maybe? Perhaps. Well, I know, that, I, I know that you're going to roast the living hell out of me, probably. In yeah, we'll see. We'll see, but... Do you want me to do the outro? Yay, roll with it. Hey, thank you very much, everyone, for listening and watching, if you're watching us on YouTube. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, follow us on our different platforms. So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify, and Apple Podcast. <laughs> we have such a list right now. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode and don't forget to get lost. All right. I love it.